We're now ready to move on to our table adjustments. And the goal of this is to ensure that the, the plane that the table's in is perfectly perpendicular to the drill bit. That means front to back and side to side need to be perpendicular to this drill bit. So before we actually make any table squareness adjustments, I wanna show you how that's done on this particular drill press model. And that's a lot easier to do with the table removed. Um, so you can see here, the table sits on this arm here and it kind of swivels around. Um, there's two things holding it in place. There's a zero degree locking pin here, and then you have this table bevel uh, locking bolt. Normally, if you wanted to do bevel drilling, you would actually remove this pin by tightening this nut down so that it forces this pin out. Hopefully that comes out on camera, but essentially when you tighten this nut down, it's going to force the pin out of that hole. And then you can make your, uh, then you can uh, drill at an angle. However, like I said, because we're adjusting squareness, that won't be necessary in this case. So all we need to loosen is this locking bolt. Now, because this particular drill press model has this locking pin here, there's only so much play in this table. And I'll show you about how much. There's only about that much adjustability for your uh, table tilt or for your squareness adjustment. So if you find that you can't get your table square to your drill bit uh, with that amount of adjustability, you may have to actually enlarge this hole so that the pin can move a little bit more. Alternatively, if you didn't want to drill this out, you could actually just remove this pin and then just keep the table locked with, the, with this uh, large bolt here at all times. One last thing to note while I have this off, I like to apply some anti-seize on both this, uh, this pin and bolt because I tend to get rust in here and they're very difficult to remove in the future without any kind of lubrication in here. And you may also apply some lubricant around here so that it slides freely. Now I'm going to reinstall the table. Whoops. I'm just going to lock that in place. So there we go. Now we're ready to make level mess adjustments on our table. You can see there's a little bit of play now because we've loosened that bolt. Now there's several methods you can use to get this table perpendicular. Uh, I'll start with the worst and uh, end with the one that I prefer. To use an engineering square or a combination square to check for squareness of the bit to the table in both dimensions, which means front to back and side to side like this. It looks like It looks like our table needs to rotate uh, counterclockwise a little bit because there's a gap up there. And front to back, let's see. Front to back is hard to tell. I, uh, there's not much of a gap there. Another method you can use to adjust for table squareness is to use a contraption like you see here. Uh, Where it makes these rounded hex keys that are ideal for this task, but really all you need is anything that's rigid that you can chuck and that reaches your table edge uh, to adjust for squareness. And I'll show you how to do that. You just chuck whatever you're going to use like this. There we go. And now we can spin this around. And essentially what we're going to do is take measurements at the back, front, and left and right side of the table. And the ideal condition is all four of those points be level. Uh, the first thing you need to do is center your table and get it to the right height. So let's go ahead and move this up a little bit. Get it right over my hex key at the edge. Right about there. Let's check it on this side. Okay, so that's about the right orientation. Now we want to adjust the table height up so that it touches the hex key just a little bit because you want to find which side is highest. Okay, you can see that when I tighten it, um, it is now scraping over here. It's not scraping here and also not over here. And not in the back. So this side is definitely high. So how do we actually use this device to adjust for table squareness? Well, the answer is pretty simple. We can do one of two things. We can either adjust it with no measuring instruments whatsoever and just do this all by sound and you'll be surprised how close you can get 
using that method, or you can use something like feeler gauges and measure them at all four points of your table and make sure the gap is the same. Now the final method you can use is, of course, using a dial indicator. And you would use it in a similar manner as I previously demonstrated. I'm just using some threaded rod, a dial indicator, and a steel bar here. And once again, we've chucked this bar so that this is free floating on the chuck. And basically what we want to do is the same thing I showed previously is uh, first we need to move our table up so that it's within the range of the dial indicator. Like so, lock it down. And basically we would take measurements at each one of the four points here. Here, here, here. And adjust table levelness. Now because your table tilt changes with how tight you have your locking handle, you want to eye mark this handle to a representative uh, tightness and adjust off of that. Uh, in my case, I have about eight thousandths of an inch deflection front to back when it is tightened to what I typically tighten it to. Now I can, I can tighten it very loosely, but the table's gonna move, or I can make it really tight, and now we're at nine or 10 thousandths of an inch deflection. But typically when I tighten my handle down, I'm about right there. So we're gonna go ahead and eye mark it right there. So that is my locking handle position that I'm going to adjust my table tilt to. Now the way to adjust front to back squareness on this particular drill press model or ones like it are to apply shims either at the top or bottom of the bevel locking bolt. My table is higher in the front than the rear, which means we need to apply a shim above the locking bolt. Because we're only out six thousandths of an inch front to back, I wanna make a very small adjustment to this junction because my measurement point is a far distance away. So it's going to be amplified over this long distance. So I'm just gonna go with the smallest feeler gauge that I have, which is one and a half thousandths of an inch. And I'm just gonna cut a small tab here. So I have my shim, which is one and a half thousandths. I'm going to, I'm going to loosen my locking bolt here. There we go. And I can slide this in there. Just be sure I don't drop it. There we go. And then I'm gonna tighten it right back up again. So I've tightened up my bevel tilt locking bolt. And what I wanna do is retake my measurements. By the way, everything has to be tightened down fully whenever you're taking your measurements. That includes the table, uh, the bevel tilt bolt, etc. So let's go ahead, go over here and re-zero it. Looks like that made a very small change to the, to the rear of my table, maybe half a thousandth of an inch. And then I'm gonna come back to my front here. And it looks like we are now at three and a half thousandths of an inch. So by adding one and a half thousandths of an inch shim at the top of my table arm, I've reduced the front to back squareness um, by about three thousandths. We are now at about three. Uh, down from about six. So if I double the shim width here, we should be able to get about zero. So I threw another uh, 1.5 thousandths of an inch shim in there. We are zeroed on the back end. Let's go ahead and see how we did. And it looks like we're at zero there too. So uh, front to back is now level. Now, do I think this adjustment of six thousandths of an inch is worthwhile? Uh, no, absolutely not. If I were if I weren't doing this for demonstration purposes, I really wouldn't bother with anything less than like ten thousandths of an inch. There are so many sources of variation that it's really not worth going any lower than that. If I just move this dial indicator around, you can see it bounce as much as three thousandths of an inch, and that's purely from the roughness of the table. And that's not even considering that the, the table probably isn't even machined that flat to begin with. Um, in addition to that, obviously, if I just move my handle, if I loosen it and tighten it back up to the same spot, I'm going to get a little bit different reading. So, you know, a couple thousandths of an inch here, a couple thousandths there. It's really not worth trying to tune that out because it's just going to be off again within a few minutes of use anyway. So I really wouldn't bother if this worked for demonstration purposes. One other thing to consider is that if you have these shims here, uh, it makes it difficult to keep them in place. 
if you want to do angled holes. So now that we've adjusted squareness front to back to the bit, it's time to move to the side to side adjustments. I've also checked my side to side skew with my dial indicator and it's about six thousandths of an inch high on this side. So that means we need to come up this side about three thousandths because we're pivoting around the center point. So you have to split the difference, obviously. Um, so if this side comes up three thousandths, this side will come down three thousandths and it'll even out. Um, basically what I want to do is loosen my locking bolt a little bit. Um, we need to maintain some friction and then I'm going to try and hammer it into place. Okay, so I'm going to show you the final result of our table squareness adjustment, starting with the right hand side. Okay, so we are zero to our right hand side. The front is coming in at one thousandths of an inch. The left hand side is coming in at two thousandths of an inch and the rear is coming in at one thousandths of an inch. So all four sides are within two thousandths of an inch. That is golden.